Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I just talk fast. I'll get through this intro fast. No time for any fancy intros or announcements because today we gotta get through all this quick because I'm going to be reviewing every single book I've read this year. I have read 50 three books this year and 23,703 pages. That's like how much I read last year, but in half of the year, which is crazy. And so we're gonna go through every single book. I wanna try to talk about each one for like one minute. So it's gonna be a challenge trying to cool down my thoughts just to one minute, but we're gonna do this. There's gonna be no spoilers. We're just gonna jump in. Make sure to leave a like if you're excited, subscribe to my channel down below for more bookish content every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And we make, we make sure to leave a comment with some of your favorite and the least favorite books of the year. But yeah, we don't have any time to waste. Let's get into our first reading month in January. All right, guys, so let's take it back to January, the first reading month of this year. And in January, I read a total of five books and 2,112 pages. The first book that I read this year was Again But Better by Christine Riccio. This book is a book all about second chances. And this book is about this girl named Shane who is trying to start college over. She's going to study abroad. Her first college experience was not that great. And so she's going to create this whole, you know, um, study program that her parents think that she's going to. And she's going to book it and go to a creative writing program in London. And there she meets a boy who you know, she gets a crush on. She's just trying to kind of, you know, score the guy as well as get out of the track that her parents wanted her on because her parents wanted her to be a pre-med or like a doctor or whatever, but she wants to be a creative writer. Full of relatable characters and full of relatable events. Um, second chances, like I read this while starting this new YouTube channel, it's like a second chance at YouTube, which I really thought was cool. Book number two of the year is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass, which is the last book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Of course, I'm not gonna spoil this book. So I'm just gonna say that I really, really enjoy it. This is the kind of final war in this first kind of trilogy set in this world that Sarah J Maas created. Well, I'm not going to really say anything about this book, but um, the first book is all about this girl named Feyre who basically has to start a new life in the Fey world, the Perithian. Basically this whole series follows Feyre's life as her life gets uprooted and she has to start a new life. Romances in this world, all the battles, all the events, and fight for herself and her loved ones and overcome a lot. This book is just kind of one of the best I feel like in this series, just like rallying um, people up to, you know, fight for herself and, you know, try to keep her life and her loved ones alive as well. And yeah, I just don't want to say much about this, but I really loved it. I feel like Sarah J Maas started putting more representation in this book, which I liked. The character's a lot more diverse. The world was so beautifully written and the plot is amazing. Sarah J Maas is able to weave the story so well together and just create all these kind of weird plot points and I don't really know how to explain it, but she's just such a, you know, great narrator, and I also just love the main character, Feyre. Book three is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This book is a murder mystery and was kind of like my introduction to the mystery genre because I haven't read much mystery or even murder mystery in the past, so that's why I was really interested in this. This is a young adult book, by the way, and Maureen Johnson did a really great job at this book, and I was so intrigued at the beginning because this is a dual plot line, so we're following the past at Ellingham Academy, the first kind of murder and kidnapping to happen, and then the second murder in the present. And so the main character, Stevie Bell, has to kind of figure out what's going on in the past as well as in the present and figure out both mysteries and try to also use them together to find out who the murderer was. In the past, at this famous academy, the billionaire like developer of this academy, the billionaire, he um, had kids, that, like, kids and his wife was living there at the academy. They got um, kidnapped and murdered and the only note that was left was this mocking riddle by Truly Devious and then Truly Devious strikes again as Stevie Bell enters the academy again. So yeah, it's a really intriguing novel. Um, it's super filled with mystery and at the end when we find out who the murderer was and like, uh, it was just crazy and it's also a series so we don't get to find out everything and then I'm just so excited to keep diving into the series. And then we've got the next book, A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas, which is Book 3.5 is kind of the midpoint between the series that Sarah J Maas is creating. Basically, this is like a short kind of novella where we're taking place at the winter solstice. Like, you know, everything's peaceful after the big war in the third book that I kind of talked about. Um, I can't really say much about it because if you want to start the series, I'm just going to kind of say that, you know, there's peace again in this world and Feyre and her oh, true OTP from the first kind of series um, is together and they're creating this whole thing for the winter solstice and they're 
they're just planning it out and Feyre is experimenting with painting and she's just kind of getting back in her roots. It's kind of like a Christmas special, like you know how TVs have like Christmas specials or whatever, like special episodes for Christmas stuff. This is basically just the same thing with the book and I was actually very underwhelmed with this book. Like it didn't add anything, it was boring, it was dull, it was winter, so I don't really like it. But it also does kind of explain a lot of things and it's almost like a really just extended epilogue which I kind of liked but I just remember not liking it at all. It was kind of dull and it didn't add anything to the story. Like there was no like problems or solutions or actions needed to be taken and again it was just kind of dull. I didn't really like it but I mean I think I gave this like three stars so I don't know and I think I'll talk about this more in my worst books I read in 2020 because that was one. Book number five of this year and the last book I read in January is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I know a lot of you guys have read this and I was kind of late to hop on the train but I'm glad I finally did because The Lunar Chronicles is this really crazy intergalactic sci-fi fantasy like crazy um you know plague and political story that I just really love. I think this is middle grade or young adult, I don't remember, but it has the feel of both, to be honest. We're set with this girl named Cinder, who is a cyborg, really not even like a Cinderella or a telling, where she meets the prince, and then there's this plague that's ravaging the population of New Beijing. There's this whole conspiracy between the Lunars and the people of New Beijing, because the Lunars are on this moon, or basically above them on this different planet, and they're wreaking havoc, and I don't really know, remember what much about it, but it was just crazy it was so so fun um, I just remember being like so I was zoomed through this I felt like I could read this really really quickly full of action full of mystery and conspiracy and also high emotion high action dual perspectives between Cinder and the Prince and just the plague that was like kind of averaging population. I wouldn't recommend this now because of what's happening in our world, but it kind of just represents, you know, what's happening with the coronavirus and stuff. So it was pretty fun. I mean, I read this before the coronavirus. Oh my gosh, it was like karma. Like I read this and then the coronavirus happened. Ooh, that's crazy. Um, this plague is a lot more deadlier. It was so fun, so actionable, and I cannot wait to read the next few series because the mystery got crazy and the conspiracy got crazy. That's all my January books. Now we're getting to February. All right, guys, next up we have got February, and in February I read three books and only 1,201 pages, which is not a lot, but let's jump into the three books that I read. First up, I read Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I actually read this for a 500 subscriber like all in one day reading vlog, and I'll leave that up for you guys right there. I really, really enjoyed this book, this dystopian, futuristic sci-fi kind of deal, a futuristic world where humans have defeated death, they defeated hunger, they defeated thirst, humans can't die. So the only thing that kind of controls the human population are scythes. Meet a certain quota every year of people that they have to kill so that the human population does not burst. And in this book, two apprentices kind of learn how to become a scythe and it's just so weird how like, you know, scythes have to kill off the population and death is like not a thing. You know, people will literally fling themselves off a building, they won't die and they'll come back to life. And I actually really loved it. It was so high action and I enjoyed it more as it went on because it got faster. There's more action, there's more tension, there's more suspense, there's murders between the scythes. And so yeah, this was a five star book and I actually claim this to be my best book of the year so far and my mid-year book freakout tag, which will leave that up there. Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This was probably like a 4.5 star for me. This this book is really interesting. It's also about Faye, where we are set with this girl named Jude who was kidnapped from the human world like seven years ago, and now she's grown up and she wants to become a part of the Faye world. But there's one person stopping her, Prince Cardin, to find to try to find a way into the court. And it was really interesting. It was so like tense and suspicious all the whole way through. And the characters were really nice. I also just love the main character and the fight within her. And this book also does kind of bring up a few issues that we have in the modern world. And also just how the two worlds like were combined, like the human world and the Fey world, and like the new fantasy element of this. I really loved it. It wasn't the best because it was kind of like politics, but I mean it was pretty good. And I want to read more from Holly Black because the writing was super interesting. Book eight from the year and the third and last book of February was Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. And I feel like I remember not really liking this when in actuality I did like this. And I feel like I kind of came to senses that it wasn't as bad as I thought, but I still think this was one of the worst books that I read. February was just not a great reading month, I feel like, because it was just kind of filled with mediocre books, but Scythe was amazing. Dark Crowns is basically about this island where there are three young queens who are grown up in like separate parts of the land. Like there's the Elementus, the Naturalists, 
something else, and the poison or whatever. Every like kind of new ruler, there's a set of triplets is born, and those triplets are the queens. Instead of competition between three dark crowns or three queens who need to kill each other to try to get the throne. I love this book so much. Um, I didn't love it so much, but it was just really interesting seeing like each queen, how they're really all not ready to kill each other, and how there's one queen that's powerful than the most. Like, yeah, that is February books. Now let's get into March. Alright guys, we are on to March, and in March I read 12 books and 4,820 pages, which is almost like four times the amount I read in February, which is actually more in four times. So yeah, I had a really great reading month in March, and this is when quarantine started. The first book that I read in March, and was my ninth book that I read this year, is The Leveler by Julia Durango, which was my first sci-fi of the year, and I think like only my only sci-fi. Well, I guess um, Cinder was sci-fi too, but anyways, this is all about this virtual gaming world, which I feel like a lot of sci-fis are now for some reason, but is this virtual game world called the Meep Universe, and we are set with this character who goes in and rescues kids from the universe for their parents, and she's like making money off that, but she never expects when the billionaire game developer's son is pulled into the world and can't get out, and he hires her to basically go in and save him, and there's this hit big conspiracy with his son, I guess, um, Win Salvador is the son, he left his like suicide note, but then she thinks that it's like a corporation kind of like holding him hostage. Hostage. So she basically gets to enter this really interesting meep game world to try to save him and it's really interesting. I love this kind of sci-fi aspect. It wasn't like too sci-fi-y and I, I kind of like this virtual video game. I kind of feel like intrigued by that. Like, um, you know, I've always liked kind of video games, like kind of like, you know, going into these virtual worlds. Like I've always been interested in that. So I guess this was kind of fun and it was very mysterious. Like this was actually really beautifully written. It was very quick. It was very, you know, short. Like, she didn't drag things out at all. She didn't, like, info dump. She didn't add any in and unnecessary information. She got to the point. It was great. It was a pretty good book. And I'm gonna get to this point and say that it was a five star. Next up, I started my reread of Keeper Velocity series. And if you guys have been watching my channel, you would know that I love Keeper Velocity. It's my favorite series ever. And if you don't, where have you been? Have you been living under a rock? <laughs> Keeper Lost Cities is a series all about this girl named Sophie Foster who's 12 who finds out that she's a telepath and she can hear other people's thoughts and then she meets this boy one day who tells her that she's an elf and she has to suddenly uproot herself and her life gets twisted and turned and she basically has to go out into the Lost Cities and she has to live in this new world with the elves. Fantasy, conspiracy, mystery, I love it. Next up, we've got Exile, Washington Messenger, which is the second book, and I don't really want to say anything spoilerly, so I'm just gonna say that a new creature is kind of introduced to the world after the first book, as well as the character is starting to lose his mind, and he's, his mind is starting to break, as well as Sophie's abilities are starting to kind of yeah, malfunction or this new creature, Sylvani, that she has to train and get ready for the sanctuary. I just love the new, you know, creature that is one in a one in a million chance that she's gonna find it, and I thought that was a really cool addition. It just made Sophie that much more powerful and boss. And then we have Everblaze, the last um, book of Acute Velocities that I read this month. We'll continue with this series later, but this, I don't even remember. I don't usually remember what happens in this book. The Lost Cities are teetering on the edge of danger, and the ogres, and the, this another intelligent species, are kind of threatening havoc on their world, as well as Sophie is starting to grow a little bit more powerful, and she needs someone to kind of go in and take her abilities away. And that's all I'm gonna say with that book. Next up, up. I read an audiobook, so I'll just sit over here and have it up there, but it is To Best the Boys by Mary Weber, and this was my first audiobook that I listened to ever, so it holds a special place in my heart, and it was amazing. The narrator was wonderful, and I fell in love with the story. So the story is basically about this world. There's this, you know, again, another plague is ravaging the world, and the main character's mother is dying because of the plague, and so um, the main character, she's a girl, and her dad are I forgot the main character's name, but um, yeah, she and her dad are trying to find a cure, but then she has to enter this competition with all the boys, and she has to like disguise herself as a boy and go into this competition because she needs to get a scholarship so that she can, you know, go to science school and also save the cure and save the plague and, you know, save her mother. Really important topics, women's rights, fantasy elements, going into this game, she went in disguised as a boy, and I just remember being so like emotionally attached to the characters and the story because I was listening to it so slowly, like usually I read books so fast like I'm just a fast reader but just kind of like slow it down and just 
you know, read about this one book. It was amazing. So five stars to that book. Next up, we've got The Unwanted by Lisa McMahon. This story is amazing. And I'll link up to my review up there. Amazing, amazing middle grade fantasy dystopian and even a utopian story where each year in Quill, this magical land where there's other islands surrounding it, um, every year the kids of the world are sorted into wanteds, unwanted, and necessaries. Wanteds go off to college and university, unwanted are sent to their death for their creativity because it's dangerous for the, the ruler, and the necessaries are just, you know, workers and, you know, laborers. This story follows a set of twins, Alex and Aaron. One is going off to the wanteds, one is going off to the unwanteds, and basically we find out that the unwanteds are not going to their death and that there's this magical man named Mr. Today who saves them. There's a battle between the land of Artemé with all the unwanteds and the wanteds and the necessaries. There's Will and Artemy battle, but then as the series goes on, and I'll talk about this later, we, there's a whole island chain out there that they explore. And the first book was not the best book in the series, that's all I'm gonna say, but I still love the book. Like, I just love the Unwanted series by Lisa McMahon. Next up, we've got my 24 hour readathon. I did a 24 hour readathon, and this was the first book that I read in that 24 hour readathon at Divergent by Veronica Roth. This is a reread, clearly. I've read this a lot of times. I only like the first book. The second and third book can go to I'm just kidding this book is all about this like futuristic world kind of like the hunger games where you know, it's just a futuristic version of our world where the society is divided into five fractions and we follow this girl that you know she takes this test to see what faction she should join when she comes of age and we find out that she's divergent and that she can fit into multiple fractions and that she's a very dangerous kind of you know type or like a human and so she goes to the dauntless faction leaving her family at the abnegation faction and the dauntless faction is this fearless faction where everyone's fighting and poo 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 you know Triss you know the Beatrice whatever the girl that was on this book she has to navigate this new faction she has to stay alive and at the end of the book we find this whole conspiracy that involves the divergence and all that fun stuff I know a lot of people are like the Divergent series is trash and that's true but the first book is amazing you have to read it next up from the 24 hour readathon we've got the explorers the door in the alley by Adrienne Kress a middle grade contemporary adventure where it's going through a city and basically this boy finds this club that with all the explorers from the world there's also this um girl named Evie, her home gets taken over by like these men, she escapes. The two boys and girls meet and then they have to go on this adventure to find the explore the door in the alley, the key or whatever, and so they have to go run around the city while also someone is chasing them. Have to like chase down this key as well as these men that are kind of trying to protect the key or whatever are trying to chase down them. It's a really interesting like a wild goose chase that I really thoroughly enjoyed but we've got a lot more books to read in March so I'll just say that this is a really interesting book that's like something new for me and I loved it. It was a really great adventure story. Five out of five stars. All right guys there's four more books in March. So the next one was The BFG by Roald Dahl which one is my favorite childhood author and it's basically is is set in this world where there are giants roaming around. This giant captures this girl, but she finds out that this is a big, friendly giant. That's why it's named the BFG or whatever. She and the giant basically try to take over the other giants in the world that are eating kids every night, snatching them up and eating kids. And like, not in like a kind of like funny way. Like, not, this is not like real or anything. This is just a lighthearted book. Sophie and the BFG go to overthrow the other giants and also just take them out of the whole world. It's like a really funny, interesting, you know, middle grade, light-hearted childhood story. And it always never fails to make me smile. Just like with the grammar of the BFG and the, the snozfockle and the fizzberry, fizzberry soda that makes them fly or whatever. So it's just like a really interesting, whimsical, light-hearted book. Next up, we've got We Hunt the Flame. This is where all my bookmarks are going. They're going into this one book. I don't really know why they're in this book. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Fazel. Fazel, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. We've been through this. Anyways, We Hunt the Flame is all about this, you know, epic kind of fantasy. And I don't really know how to explain it because it's so confusing. It was kind of like Wizard of Earth that I'll talk about later, but it's kind of like old writing. Set in this new world, we have this girl who disguises herself as a boy because again, the gender roles and the, you know, women are really treated really badly in the story. And she has to dress up as a boy Boy, she goes out into the forest and you know brings back food for her village and then we're also you know, set with this dual perspective with the prince of death who is sent to kill the hunter as the hunter goes on this magical quest to save the world it's just a really interesting magical fantasy story and i think that if you want to try something new again this will be good it was probably like three 8.5 stars this was actually one of the worst books that i read this year but it was pretty good as well it just wasn't the best you know like a lot of the books i read are the best this was just the second best next up we've got the amount of 
is The Island of Silence by Lisa McMahon, which is the second book in the Unwanted series. And this is the second to last book that I read in March. So in this book, we have, have them reeling. There is panic. Everyone is panicking. And so what happens is this book is the next island is introduced. The leaders of the Artemis are, you know, very wanting a holiday and they kind of try to go to the Island of Silence for this holiday when we find out that this is actually a very dangerous world for them to go to for a holiday. While Aaron, the wanted, is trying to rally his power and defeat Artemis. That's kind of the main gist of the synopsis and I really love this book. It was so tense and so like suspenseful the whole time because we had Aaron trying to like overthrow Artemis and like Quill constantly trying to send harm Artemis away. And then we have Alex trying to burden this new task that he gets by Mr. Today, which is really good. I love this book so much and it kind of sets in boom with the rest of the series because there's a big event at the end of Island of Silence that sets everything in. Okay, and finally, last book of March. Whew, I've been talking for so long, but last book of March is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Lovenseller is the last book of March and I loved it. Everything from the world to the characters, the interesting kind of fantasy element to it, it was great. So basically we're set in this Viking inspired story where I'm set with the main character who's, who's about to go into adulthood. She has to complete this task for the village elders. Basically what ends up happening is she's betrayed. She gets set up so that she has to complete the Madagur. She's banished from the village. She has to complete this task this Madagur so she can go back to the village. I don't really know how to explain it, but this betrayal was huge. I was not expecting it and I was shocked. I mean, I went to Goodreads right when I read that shocking thing and I was like, Duh, what? And I just love the representation in this book. And also just like the high action, them completing all their different dangerous tasks that are supposed to kill them. Like also this romance kind of intertwined as well within the girl and the boy and then there's the boy and a boy relationship as well. So it's, it's a nice book. I just loved it and it was so woodsy too. Too. like she was just out in the wild like peace out like she was just you know being calm being chill with the nature i loved it so much it was a great setting i loved kind of like the viking inspired feel and the betrayal at the start was astronomical so yeah i really loved all the march books that i read it was a great reading month like you can see i read three books to 12 books and i've been talking forever so i'm going to you know pause this and we'll go into the next month orange mango flavored sparkled water pure bliss. All right, guys, we are back in this filming location to talk about the books I read in April. And in April, I read 3,815 pages across 11 books. So 11 books and 3,815 pages, which was a good reading month. It was a little bit less than what I read in March. It was chaotic. But yeah, let's go into the books that I read. So first I read The Twits by Roald Dahl. It's another Roald Dahl book that I read this year. And again, Roald Dahl is one of my favorite authors. This was like a 75 page, really sweet, really funny story that I read for the Owl's Magical Readathon prompt of a book under 150 pages. So I had to read something small like this. I wouldn't normally do that. But this book is about the Twits who are an old couple, as you can see on the cover, who constantly play pranks at each other. And it became so ugly because of their meanness and their like, you know, ugly spirit created an ugly outside appearance. It was really nice, it was really funny and sweet. And then at the end, basically the animals tried to kind of overthrow the twits. It was just like a fun, you know, silly kind of lighthearted book again with this old couple playing kind of pranks on each other. And all right, next up we've got The Raft by S.A. Bodine. And this is like a survival story where we are set with this main character named Robbie. She goes to this island for like a little vacation. When she's on the way back, her plane crashes into the sea and she's thrown out with another boy named Max. And they um, are across the ocean, they have to survive. They land on this ocean, basically she just needs to kind of find out how to survive and also she has this like kind of has to battle with her inner emotions like in her inner mind because her mind is starting to play tricks on her and it just kind of goes to show like the effect the mental toll that going through these like really intense experiences gonna have and so I really like this book um again like the emotional side to it like you know Robbie started hallucinating like she was making stuff up she was talking to herself and it was just so like interesting and intriguing cool like survival book but also like a mental psychological book and next up I could not find this anywhere so I mean maybe one of someone else has it but the welcome to superhero school book by gracie dix is my next one and i received this as an arc just by the way i got to send the book by the author exchange for a review and you can see my review up there yeah i'll try to leave that up there if i can but welcome to superhero school is a really awesome kind of like middle grade where these kids go to like a superhero school and there's this evil organization called the board trying to take these kids down what i really liked about this book is that gracie dix was like 
able to just play around and experiment so much with with their superpowers like their superpowers were able to like be turned off by some of their like their gadgets and stuff and like people were able to suck in each other's powers like the evil organization was able to like take their powers and some people were able to block their powers and some things were able to enhance their powers that was just really cool and i loved learning all that fun stuff about their powers I also just loved like the big action scenes there's a lot of action in this book there was no fluff whatsoever and i think it was actually even too much action to a point but yeah i would probably give this like a 4.5 out of 5 stars it was just super nice bunch of superheroes bunch of action I had a great time reading it all right i'm back in the middle and the next book that i read was harry potter and the sorcerer's stone anyways this book is about this girl named this girl this boy this boy named harry potter he was born with this lightning shaped scar on his head his parents were killed in a car accident but then he later realizes that no his parents were wizards and the wizard kind of antagonist this evil wizard killed his parents and tried to attempt to kill him harry is invited to join the wizard school school Hogwarts he goes and there he has to kind of defeat Voldemort again because he's coming back and there's a school mystery with the Sorcerer's Stone. It's a really amazing book filled with magic, filled with wizardry, filled with mystery, and filled with like just amazing characters because they're all so freaking humble. I love the characters so much, especially Harry Potter, Hermione, amazing. Ron in this book was not annoying. We stand a non-annoying Ron. And you know, the whole introduction to the magical world and the whole whimsicalness of Harry Potter and his friends. Then we've got The Chamber of Secrets, which is the second book in the Harry Potter series, which of course I read the second one after the first one. I wouldn't go like one, three, two or anything, but The Chamber of Secrets is Harry's second year at Hogwarts. He goes and this year there's basically this menace, this like threat, like basically there's this murder going around the school and like petrifying kids and there's this heir to Slytherin arising. So there's a lot of like interesting, like creepy stuff going on at the school and Harry has to figure it out. Um, again, I love Hogwarts so much. The school and the magic and like just the whole whimsicalness. And I feel like it's such a cozy read, like almost like a murder mystery because there, again, there is like this murder walking around and petrifying kids. So it's just like a fun, like kind of murder mystery inspired, fun fantasy, magical book. Next one was Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling again. But yeah, the Prisoner of Azkaban was really... Oh, I could do ASMR channel. Anyways, Prisoner of Azkaban is Harry's third year at Hogwarts. I'm trying to speed through this, but there is this man named Sirius Black who is in the wizarding prison of Azkaban. He escapes. He's on the run to kill Harry. That's like the premise of this. In his sleep at the prison, he's like, he's at Hogwarts, he's at Hogwarts, he escapes, and Harry basically is not safe at Hogwarts, and everyone's treating him nicely and stuff because they know he's in danger. I love the suspension, the suspension, I can't say that, but I love the suspense and like the suspiciousness and the tenseness of it all. Like there's just so much tense susp suspense, you know, with like Harry being like, oh my gosh, am I gonna get killed tonight? Like he was not safe at Hogwarts. This is the year that he was not safe at Hogwarts. The ending twisted everything together so nicely and Harry also just a little bit more adventurous in this book so I love it. Next up, we've got A Hoot by Carl Hiezen. Hiezen, Hiezen. This is like a fun environmental contemporary where we have our set with this boy named Roy and he goes to this new school. Um, he has moved throughout his whole life like to every new state in school. So like he's just moved to a new town and there's this interesting mystery with this new Paula's Pancakes construction site for a new Paula's Pancakes restaurant. We have Roy Everhart finding this boy who's like running across Cross. And he's like, oh my gosh, who is that boy? Like this running boy calls him. He sees him running somewhere every day um, when he goes to school. And there's this, also this police officer that is trying to, you know, protect the construction site because the construction site is getting constantly pranked and vandalized and all that stuff. And so basically there's just this interesting mystery and it's like an environmentalist kind of book to like save the owls. There's owls in that construction site and the construction sites will be killing all those owls. And so basically it's a fight to stop them from killing all the owls. And I love the good vibes, the good messages. We love a good environmentalist pro-environment you know book of course we love saving owls that's good next up we've got hatchet by gary paulson and hatchet is another survival story this month i was just full of reading survival books and hatchet was really good um it was not like my first time reading or anything it's like a survival classic and i really liked it i liked the classic aspect to it because it was survival like i, I don't like normally reading just like any 
random classic like this was a good classic because i just remember like it being so thoughtful and it felt like so refreshing just with um all of his thoughts like were so like philosophical and it was just like more of like a mature survival story like i've read a lot of like fun survival stories or like middle grade survival stories this was like a true you know more adult version of a survival story and it was like it was not positive there were a bunch of lows you know there's there was their valleys and there's those high points but there was some low sad points and stuff too so it just felt more real and like more thoughtful and more you know philosophical and i love that feel to it oh uh, yet again we've got another harry potter book this is the last harry potter book of the month don't worry but now we've got harry potter and the goblet of fire and this is my favorite book in the harry potter series i'm pretty sure i think i made a ranking harry potter video which i'm not gonna link up there because i don't think i have enough cards for this video but anyways this is harry potter's fourth year at hogwarts and basically harry goes to hogwarts there's this new event happening what, what's happening is other schools are going to compete in this like triwizarding tournament harry gets chosen for the triwizarding tournament even though he's not old enough and basically has to try to win the tournament he actually is excused from all like the exams and all that stuff because he's a champion in the triwizarding tournament and there's also something mysterious happening on the undersides of this tournament because voldemort is finally arising he is going to use the triwizarding tournament to up himself and revive himself into a human being again and voldemort is going to be back so there's this interesting dual like i keep saying dual plot lines and stuff but it really is like we have harry competing in this triwizarding tournament like all that he's worrying about is trying to win this tournament and get all those galleons then we have like voldemort like in the midst and kind of like you know growing his army he's like gaining back his power and he is ready to fight again so i really like that it's just an amazing book and i loved how like more mature it was and how it just kind of aged up a little bit it was high action you know it was like really tense the whole time and i loved it all right next up our second to last we've got a curse so and dark and lonely this book is basically a beauty and the beast retelling it's the second beast retelling i've read in the last 12 months because i love beauty the Beast retellings. But this is about this prince named Ren who is under this curse basically and his curse is that like every like season he resets like he's been living for ages now and every he needs to like break the curse by getting someone to love him so every season he goes to the world and he tries to get the girl to fall in love with him and that will break the curse and every year he hasn't been able to succeed so the season keeps restarting and restarting and restarting this year we have harper you know seeing the guy that was kidnapping the girl to go to the world she's like hey what are you doing and then the advisor actually ends up taking her to this world i know it's confusing it's a good book nevertheless but he basically takes her to the world and she has to break the curse now but she's she hates him basically for kidnapping her into the world and she also wants to get back into the human world because basically what's happening is her brother is in serious danger and her mom is in serious danger because she's dying and basically she has to try to break the curse and help run out as well as trying to get back to her world so many books this year i, I like dual plot lines and stuff like plot line happening in this world but there's also plot line happening in the other world and she needs to be able to save both worlds and i really love that um i don't want to talk about this for too long but really great recommendation i have if you want like a good beauty and the beast retelling um it's super super nice and it's just so magical and it's like a romance and stuff so yeah lastly we have magnus chase and the gods of asgard the hammer of thor which is the second book i read the first book so many times that i didn't really need to read it again to read the second book but the second book i don't really remember what the second book was about but the first book i remember is magnus chase dies that's not the end of the book because magnus chase gets picked up by this valkyrie his life, whole life is uprooted well and he's killed it's it's gone his life is gone and he travels to this mansion for the dead or for like the dead that you know died like fighting and stuff and so basically what happens is he goes to this magical hotel named valhalla he goes to that um mansion but there's this doomsday coming and then he has to leave because he has to like save the world basically he has to get all these magical objects so that he can stop the ravagog or the doomsday from coming and destroying the world basically because he you know he wants to stay alive in this world that he's dead in so yeah it's really just an intriguing book i the better series from mcgrayard and because it's so funny so humorous like going through all like the different gods and like the characters are so funny and also Rick Riordan is probably the best author this year that I've seen with representation. Like so many diverse characters and sexualities and there's literally characters from every walk of life. And I love it so much. Really funny, really lighthearted. And you know, it's a race to stop the doomsday from coming every single book. All right, that wraps it up for um, April. I read again, 11 books and 3,815 pages in April. And if you are still staying with me through this video, you're beautiful. Thank you for staying with me this long.
All right, guys, now we are on to May, and in May I read five books across 3,374 pages. The first book that I read this month is The Ship of the Dead, and the third book in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series. I'm not really going to talk about this for long because I just kind of talked about the series, but again, this is like the final chance for Magnus to stop Doomsday from coming. He must ride on this ship and obtain some magical items along the way, and he has to defeat the evil person in the series, and he has to take down him once and for all. This is his last chance at victory. You know, it's again like another um, high tenseness book having to race across the time to get to this evil person and try to stop and you know avoid the plan that he's trying to enact and you know they just have to stop it once and for all it was amazing the characters again were amazing and i love how this book brought up you know issues from our real world it's really great i loved it so much and i just love how rick riordan is so inclusive and great you know diverse characters and amazing adventure next up we've got harry potter and the order of phoenix by jk nope but yeah harry potter and the order of the phoenix fifth year of Hogwarts, going to Hogwarts for the fifth time already, so repetitive. But this year, he's getting like these strange dreams about this hallway, um, and walking around this hallway, and Voldemort's trying to invade his mind. Basically, Harry Potter needs to stop all this like magicness that's going on in his brain. He needs to stop these dreams, and there's something weird going on with the Ministry of Magic that he needs to figure out. And the Ministry of Magic is also painting Harry as this fool, and they don't believe that Voldemort is back when he is back, and so it's just a whole, you know, first fight against you know, first war against Voldemort, basically. And the ending with that death was so sad, and Harry Potter had to go through so much, and I'm so in love with this book. It was a little slow. I loved Dollars Ombridge. She was a great addition, like a good evil character, and I just loved all, like, the little inquisitions and stuff, like, rules she made. So I felt so tense, like, Dollars Ombridge was always around the corner and stuff, and it was just a really nice book. All right, next up, we've got the second to last Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Harry Potter's sixth and last year at Hogwarts, basically, where he goes, he finds this magical book that is telling him um, how to use, like, spells, and Harry becomes one of the best spell brewers and stuff, and there's this new teacher at Hogwarts, and Snape starts teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts, and also... Dumbledore starts to teach Harry about Voldemort's past, which is really interesting because now Dumbledore is teaching Harry about Voldemort and like how Voldemort came to be. He's like kind of instructing Harry for the final battle. And I just remember the ending it was crazy and so sad because one of the characters died and ah, I'm not gonna spoil or anything, but it was so sad. But yeah, this was basically like the preparation. It was like a, tra it was kind of like one of those, you know, the setup book, a filler book, um, if you will. And it was basically just Harry getting ready to defeat Voldemort in the last book, or attempt to defeat Voldemort. And we transition with all that knowledge from Voldemort's past into Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the last book. And this is my last time talking about Harry Potter for this video, thank God. I really love this book. I think it was like my second favorite book in the series or something. It was amazing. And it was basically Harry, Hermione, and Ron's quest to use the magical items that Dumbledore provided for them and learn about the Deathly Hallows and how that they can help on the quest about, you know, defeating Voldemort. And so so it was really nice, it was really epic. I mean, some characters got on my nerves and it was so cool to see the epilogue like 10 years after after the events of the last battle and also just like the last battle at Hogwarts against Voldemort and there's a lot of redemption arcs as well. Like some of the characters that were originally evil became nice and there's also betrayals as well. So like both sides were switching sides in battle and basically it was just an amazing story and the ending had me so emotional with revelations about like some of the, the people in Harry's life and then there were some deaths that were so sad and and I don't know, I just love this book so much because it like, it made the whole series wrapped up so well. And that's all I gotta say. Amazing. And then last up, we've got Never Seen by Shannon Messenger, the last book that I read this month. And this is the fourth book in the Keep the Lost City series and also my favorite book in the series and the favorite, and this is my favorite series in the world. So this is my favorite book in the entire world. I mean, yeah, that's a lot to handle. This book is literally radiating amazingness. And if you look, I got it signed by Shannon Messenger. She signed my book. But yeah, this book is about um, Sophie and Keith and Fitz and all the main characters of this story. They go run off to join an organization, a good organization, the Black Swan. And basically there's a lot of, you know, dangers that come from this. Um, Sophie and her team gets banished from Lost Cities. So she can't come back because the council will punish her. And just to go to this new school called Exilium. And a lot of new stuff gets brought in because it's a new world basically for her. And I really love this book. I love the escape feel to it. And like, just kind of like the, I'm not like the other elves kind of feel to it. And there's the high tension with the ogres and oh my gosh, another plague. I read countless amount of books this year about plagues. Oh my gosh. But yeah, there's this plague that the ogres set on the 
the gnomes and the gnomes are dying so again there's so much suspense and tension and stuff in this book which i loved and with all the new school and all the new culture and everything and just learning more about the gnomes and the ogres and that wraps up all that I had to say. So again, in May, I read five books and 3,374 pages. Let's see what June awaits because our pages just spiked. All right, next up, we are going into June, but oh, wait, I forgot something. Our good old fashioned mango orange sparkling flavor. So in June, I read 13 books across 6,785 pages. This was by far the best reading month I've had this year. The first book I read in June was A Lodestar by Shannon Messenger, the fifth book in the Hebrew of Lost Cities series. And basically, this book is all about, basically, there's something that happens where we are able to find out more about the Never Seen. We have an inside connection with the Never Seen. We're learning more about that. Um, Sophie and Keith are, you know, mingling a little bit more, which I liked. And we're just, again, learning more about the evil organizations and stuff like that. So this book was really good. And it was actually, you know, a good book. Like, I, I usually don't like this as much, but I really love this. The foreshadowing in this book was so, so nice. Nice. The characters were, you know, really developed and evolved throughout this um, series, and that's really all I got to say. I don't have much to say about each KOTLC book because I just don't want to talk about for each one for so long. But Lodestar was pretty good. It wasn't one of the best. It wasn't one of the worst. That's all I'll say. The next book that I read in uh, June was Nightfall by Shannon Messenger, and this book is all about the relationship between humans and elves. Humans get brought back, and this really unexpected twist at the end of Lodestar, and basically Sophie has to reconnect with her human family, and something is troubling her human family, and there's danger with her human family. So I'm really interested, um, and I'm always interested to read this book. I don't really want to spoil much, so that's what I'm going to say. We just get to learn more about the relationship between the humans and the elves. I really love this book, and there's a lot of action in this book, and there's a lot of intrigue, a lot of interest, and and a lot of engagement. All right, next up we've got Flashback by Shannon Messenger and this book is all about healing. Mm, I'll say that a lot because there's an event that leaves the two main characters, Sophie and Fitz, in a very brutal condition. They have to heal in the hospital for a few weeks and they grow closer to each other as they go through this near-death experience together. And then there's also this thing with the trolls and everything are targeting the trolls, trying to attack the trolls basically. And there's so much high tension, like high angst and all that stuff. So... It's a really interesting book. I did not like this as much as the other ones. It's not one of my favorites of the series. It's my least favorite of the series. But I will say that like, I kind of appreciated the slowness. Um, It's not like really fast at all, but once we got past like the big slow part for the first like 400 pages, it speeds up and it's a good book. I just wish that there was less of that hospital stuff Um, because they are in the hospital for like a few weeks and Shannon goes so into detail with that and that's really all I got to say. But with talking about all this character, you'll see I have a little lemon taste in my mouth. I need to get some mangoes. <laughs> So we're gonna again drink our little mango juice. Mm. That's great. All right. Next up, we got The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, and I did a whole review on this. Um, if you want to check that out, might leave something up there. I don't know. But The Hunger Games series is basically all about, really, there are 12 districts surrounding a capital, and all the 12 districts are struggling. They're trying they have to produce, like, materials for the capital, and the capital is, is, like, living in riches, and they're, like, kind of living off of the 12 districts while the 12 districts are struggling and having to, like, work so hard. Oh, and there's The Hunger Games as well. Like, every year, each district of the 12 districts that produce different things, they have to send in a female tribute and a male tribute to the Hunger Games and they fight to their death. Basically the story follows Katniss who is a 16 year old girl. Her sister gets reaped and is, gets chosen for the Hunger Games but she steps up for her sister and Katniss volunteers to go to the Hunger Games and basically you follow her as she goes to the Hunger Games just to navigate the capital and there's this whole thing where she has to survive the Hunger Games, defeat the capital and their evil ways. This is an amazing, amazing story. I'll get more into the details of this series later. There's the other books that I'm about to talk about, but so emotional, so beautifully written and it's just a really great like kind of dystopian series. All right, next up we've got Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins and this book is the continuation where the uprisings and the rebellion really starts against the capital. This is Katniss's her only chance to, you know, take down that evil, tyrannical 
Ruler and she's going to use this chance with all she gots and I can't really say much more about this because it really spoils things if I talk about um, later books. The Catching Fire was really great. Um, there's a lot of tension, a lot of suspensefulness because of something that happened at the beginning. Um, so basically Katniss is really tense from the beginning. There's this huge twist that shocked this world with the 75th Hunger Games and that's really all I'm going to say again. Like the characters were really great. Um, we're introduced to a lot more characters and again the story it was so beautifully written and it was like a really amazing narrative. Last up we've got from the Hunger Games series uh, Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins and this is the final final chance for Katniss to defeat the capital and their evil ways of sending children to fight for their deaths. Like oh we don't like that. So Mockingjay is this final attempt. Um, This was a little bit of a slower book but it was so much more like emotional and psychological and brought in a lot of like mental things and I really enjoyed that. Like just kind of learning more about how Katniss was going to be able to handle this and like it's just a lot of emotional trauma to go through these like wars and stuff. It's like basically a war against the districts in the capital and it was amazing and from the end it was just so it was so crazy and it's full of surprises and full of shocks even in this war. So yeah quick little summary the Hunger Games series was amazing and I did a review on it and you should totally check it out if you want to hear my 20 minute like spoiler talk all about the books. And then finally returning back to Keep It All Cities I read Legacy by Shannon Messenger. Legacy was the final Final installment so far in the Keeper Lost City series. I'm not really going to talk about it much because I don't want to spoil anyone who hasn't read this, but basically things just got a lot more complex and this is another never seen scheming book where the never seen are planning something against the dwarven capital and basically they have to stop it. So we love that like that tenseness between like the never seen like doing something like what's their plan we have to figure that out. Also like just again the characters are amazing and the relationships start to get really interesting in this book which I really liked like that love triangle in the, in the cover you can clearly see this is a love triangle. So we really get to explore that love triangle in this book, which is really, really amazing. Some things that I liked were some older characters or some like underrated characters that weren't, you know, really seen much, kind of really got a boost up in page time and all that. And there was just so many events, so much things I could rant all about, full of shocking twists and stuff. There's one twist that totally knocked my socks off. And I did a video on my other channel talking like for 20 minutes just about this one book. It was amazing. I and mean, there's just so much to talk about. All right, next up, we've got the Tales of Beetle the Bug which is like a Harry Potter book or like the book was featured in the Harry Potter series and it was like featured in the last book one of the tales but this is basically like a bunch of or a collection of wizarding tales fairy tales for wizards and they are a lot more darker and more interesting lessons and they also have to deal with the concept of magic and the laws that magic has and so this was really really interesting just seeing like um you know what the wizards were the relationship between muggles and wizards was and just seeing all the different lessons some of the tales spanned um a couple of pages while well, some spanned a lot of pages and so they're just, they're just so interesting and unique and I love the tales and you know the last tale was used heavily in the Harry Potter series the tales of the three brothers and the Deathly Hallows and all that stuff like this really connects to the Harry Potter book so this is just like a great like fandom book if you really love Harry Potter and you want to get something new this will be a great pick just because it has some fun and unique fairy tales wizard fairy tales and then we're finally back to the Unwanted. I, I read some of these in March finally got back to the series and we're just going to talk a little bit about the Unwanted books and non-spoiler as always Remember what I told you about the wanted's unwanted is necessary. So the unwanted's and their land, they're going on an adventure across the islands. They're starting on an adventure. They discover the new island, the Island of Fire, which is basically a land, this like volcano, where the volcano plunges and goes in. But also Alex's powers are put to the test as he must now lead Artemis and Aaron is trying to still gain power and I don't I don't really want to say much more than that but there's a really big event on the end of Island of Silence that makes this book so worth it. So I really love this book just from the start it was so intriguing and again the adventure was set in. I don't want to talk about this for too long because I need to get through all of these unwanted books but I really particularly like this one as it started setting in that adventure where we started to go all over the islands. Next up we've got Island of Legends which is my personal favorite and this is full of adventure like they just go off they're already in the sea like they're already on their adventure and they're going off to the fourth island which is the Island of Legends where there are some stories to tell there and there's some interesting and unique sea creatures to meet and I really loved all the stories that were told there and just all the unique sea creatures and land creatures and you know there's just so much fun stuff in this book and so much fun content. Personal favorite I just love the whole adventure with this book was wholly adventure 
adventure through the islands and discovering all the secrets and rescuing people. And then the next book was Island of Shipwrecks by Lisa McMahon. And basically in this book, we have their team on the fifth island where basically their uh, their boat got shipwrecked on this island. They have to get out. They meet some interesting new characters and new scientists that they have to, you know, intermingle with. And there's also this new interesting concept brought into the books that'll change a little bit of the aspects to it. And this was another good one. It was probably like my second, probably my second favorite book because um, they had to like figure out how to like get off this island. Their boat was like totally torn up and there's like this hurricane that was like stopping them from getting out. They had to just devise this escape plan and back in Artemae on the land of Quill and stuff, there was some interesting stuff going on. So I just really like this book. You know, it's another great adventure story and we like adventure stories. Second to last for this month, we've got Island of Graves, um, Graves, Graves by Lisa McMahon. So they go to the sixth island, which is the Island of Graves, where there's these saber-toothed gorillas that are you know, roaming around, they have to save someone from the Island of Graves. But back in Artemé, back in the land of Quill, in the first island where they started, there is this new threat, new danger, new power, new leader that they have to defeat. And so it's really interesting seeing the tension of like, they need someone's help, so they need to go back to the Island of Graves, they need to adventure while there's also this looming dangerous presence in the land of Quill and Artemé. And so it's just really tense and really suspiciousness with the new leader. And I just, I, there's something so amazing about this book, it's so well written. I just loved all the creativity that Lisa McMahon man put into this. And then last up for this month, we've got Island of Dragons by Lisa McMahon. Again, her series is wonderful. This is basically the final battle. Some of the more dangerous islands, they are all teaming up to defeat the land of Artemis and Quill because they're causing way too much problems. So they get this fleet and they're on their way to Artemis. And basically there is some action going on. And yeah, there's basically a big battle, but there's also this troubling presence with the Island of Dragons. Um, Alex and his team needs to figure out what's going on with the Island of Dragons. They need to save the Island of Dragons or some, save something that happens with the Island of Dragons, but then they launch into this big battle where there's a lot of loss, basically, and we just kind of get to figure out, like, the final parts of this, of, you know, this adventure, and they battle with their magic and stuff, and it's great. And so I just want to kind of conclude with my final thoughts about the Unwanted. Um, I did a full series non-spoiler review recently. Just go on my channel and check that out. But I just love the Unwanted series so much. There is so much good and so much creativity and so much magic and so much art, and I just love how it's also creative as they go into these adventures and, you know, go around the island saving people and the next we'll talk about the unwanted quests next but yeah I, I just cannot say enough about the unwanted um series so yeah that was june again i read 13 books across like 6785 pages or something i'm so proud of what i read in june and it was my best reading month by far that wraps up all of june let's get into one last month of what i've been reading so far in july all right, guys, it is finally the last month of this um, video. <laughs> I've been filming for two days straight. Just every, I've been filming every single waking moment for this video. It's been so long, but let's finally get into the last one. And in July, I read four books so far and 1,596 pages, which is pretty good, pretty sweet. But July has been pretty busy for me. So let's start with the first book that I read. And this is the first book of the Unwanted's Quest, the spinoff series. And it's Dragon Captives by Lisa McMahon. And basically this series is all about a new land, a new land full of dragons. So we follow 10 years later after the first series, we're set with the twin set of girls, Bisbee and Pfeiffer, and they go off with this dragon to save the dragons because all the dragons are captives in this land. And there's this new evil ruler, the king and the Revenir. The Revenir is this like main antagonist of the whole story. And basically it's just a new adventure with this new land um, that we don't get to see really in the first series. And it's the land of dragons. And there's these whole new connections and conspiracies and mysteries. I, I can't even tell you guys like how amazing this this series is. It's kind of slow and it was like, wasn't like my probably better than the Wanted series, but the Wanted quest is definitely worth it. We're gonna go a little bit deeper in the Dragon Bones, where after this whole shenanigans happen in the first book, it gets even deeper. Twins get separated somehow, and one twin is imprisoned by the Revenir, um, dragging dragon bones to and from these catacombs, and there's other people having to rescue the twin, and like, there's just so much interesting stuff that happens in this book. We also find at the very end something that it just blows my mind, and there's just like this kind of miscommunication that is so, you know, realistic, and I love, love, love that. Um, this was probably my favorite book in the Wanted's Quest so far. I only read the first three, but yeah, they want this quest pretty good. It's just so realistic and in a fantasy way though, and it's just all we get. You have to 
Sanka for more about the dragon bones and more relationships. Like we get to meet new characters like Rohan and we get to see more of Dev and just like more relationships change and get solidified and all that. And then we get Dragon Ghost by Lisa McMahon, which is the third book and the final book that I've read. There's, I think there's five books out right now and I've only read the first three. I don't only own the first three of the Unwanted's Quest, but this was one of my least favorite of the series, but just because it was a little bit long, like it was 500 pages instead of the 400 pages that the other ones were. I mean, I still, it was still pretty good. It was all about this civil war happening between the king and the revenir, like their relationship teetered over the edge in the second book and basically what happens is there's a civil war going on between the revenir soldiers and the king's soldiers and there's the revenir is doing some evil things to call the dragons and we get to introduce the dragon ghosts who are a form of dragons that like can't be killed like they're just ghost dragons basically and they're just mystical and it's really fun i love it a lot i don't really know what else to say the monster quest is going really well i love this new thing that was involving the island of fire it gets reintroduced into the series and it's so crazy and we just get to see new introduction to so many worlds and I'm just so freaking excited to read more of the series whenever I like get the next books or whatever because just the possibilities and the creativity and just Lisa McMahon is such an amazing author I just love her so much and finally we've got The Wizard of Earthsea um, by Ursula K. Le Guin I did a reading vlog which was my last video again I might leave it up there if I have space to do I only have five cards so um, I did a reading vlog where my mom basically bought this book for me I did not know what it was and I unboxed it and it was like just a surprise kind of reading vlog like a mystery book like I didn't know what this book was gonna be and we were going to go through my thoughts as I read it and I didn't really like this book at first it was like really complicated it's like a high fantasy I, I later found out why I didn't like it and I'll talk about that but this story is about this boy named Jed we start out when he's 10 he's trying to learn magic in this new world from his aunt he starts to get taken on by different apprentices and he's asked to be people's apprentices he goes to this magical school he gains power he gains knowledge of the magic and soon he's on a quest to defeat dragons and also defeat this evil thing that he brought into the world so yeah it's really interesting magic fantasy high fantasy epic fantasy so detailed so high fantasy like this is a great introduction and this has probably inspired a lot of other stories i'm sure because this was written in 1968 and that's why i did not like this book so much because it was so unrelatable writing like i love the writing that we have nowadays it's so modern and clean and stuff just the writing in here is so detailed and old it just seems old like that's i don't like books that have that feel or like classics or anything which is no hey i just don't like or just don't prefer classics so yeah that was kind of why i didn't like this book and if i had known that when going into this like I found out that this was old this was like 1970 or whatever 1960 after the book but if I went in going with that knowledge and that mindset I probably would have liked it more because I would have known what the problem was because I was trying to search for the problem the whole way through and I finally found it but yeah I think that wraps it up thank god uh, let's go outside take a quick breath of fresh air and let's end this video okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know this is random that I'll be outside. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, I've been talking about every single book that I read in 2020, then make sure to leave a like on this video. I had a really great time. Also make sure to subscribe to my video, my video, my channel for more content every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Make sure to turn on post notifications as well and set them to all so that you get notified when I post new videos. Also make sure to comment down below what you thought of the video. Have you read any of these books? What are some of the top books that you read? this year and what are some of the least top books or like the least favorite books that you read this year did you agree or disagree with my opinions all that fun stuff let's have a fun discussion and also if you made it this far like thank you because this is a long video and i think that's all i have to say um have a great rest of your day i will see you on monday for my next video love you so much bye